Today, a real talk video to help you deal with your overwhelming life. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've done a real talk video. It's a really hard topic for me to talk about. It's a really hard topic I think for most women to talk about and therefore I feel compelled to talk about it. It's usually those kind of topics that I do feel really pulled to talk about. And again, I don't like to talk about this stuff. It doesn't make me feel good to put this video out there into the world, but I do think it's important. And I do think if even one of you finds it helpful and useful, then I think it's worthwhile for sure. I want to talk about this without really using the word depression because I feel like there's such a stigma associated with depression. Unfortunately, there's no other great word to describe it. I sort of call it a funk or feeling a little bit sad or like post-holiday blues. There are a lot of different ways you can describe it and there are certainly varying degrees of it. And I know because I know from experience, I have struggled with depression in my life. I had very severe postpartum depression after my son was born. I didn't eat, I wouldn't eat. I didn't have the physical energy to like feed myself, let alone, you know, care for the baby at the time that was Gage. So I ended up having to see somebody and get help right away and, and fortunately was able to nip it in the bud right away. At different points in my life, battled and struggled with varying forms and varying degrees of depression. And again, this is a topic that's really difficult to talk about and I think that it's one that most of us don't talk about because it does have such a stigma associated with it. But I think most of us at some point or another have felt down, blue, sad, some form of depression. For me, since I have struggled with it before, I know what the signs are, I know what to look for, I know also when it happens what to do about it and how to tackle it head on. And so I thought that I would share, first of all, what I would do, my action plan, and secondly, what some of you were so kind to share with me via email. I sent out a recent newsletter saying that I was feeling a little bit blue and literally dozens of you wrote to me and shared your stories and also what works well for you. And I was so incredibly moved and touched by that. I can't even tell you. It was really remarkable. I'm touched by it. So thank you for those of you who shared your story and you shared your vulnerabilities with me and then also shared what works well for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It really, really was awesome and I really appreciate it. So I wanna talk about what my action plan is when I do start to feel a little bit sad and blue and then I wanna read what some of you wrote to me. The first thing that I've done recently that I think has made a notable improvement and difference in my life is to limit Instagram exposure. Instagram is probably the most important besides YouTube social media platform for me. And it's also the one that makes me feel the worst about myself. So I will scroll through and I follow so many bloggers, part of the business aspect. I'll start to feel just yucky. Like I'm old, I'm fat, I'm this, I'm that, you know, you name it the little voice in my head starts going, you're less than, you're less than, you're less than. And maybe that doesn't happen for you. And if that doesn't, that's awesome. Okay, but for me it does. And so what I'm doing is I am, I'm starting to add accounts that I follow that make me happier. I also am limiting the amount of time I spend each day on Instagram. So I actually set a timer for 30 minutes on Instagram and you guys can do it. Just go into your settings and set the timer. And it tells you, it notifies you when you've reached your 30 minutes for the day. It really is awesome because once I reach the 30 minutes, I may like pop back on for a minute, but I'm like, wait a minute, I've already done my 30 minutes today. I'm gonna stay away from it as much as I can. So I highly recommend that. I think limiting social media is one of the surefire ways that you can get happier. The second thing that I'm doing is to get outside more. I live in a beautiful place. I'm surrounded by gorgeous nature and mountains. And so my plan is to ski more. 
and I've wanted to work on skiing last year. It wasn't the greatest ski season. This year's been much better. I think it helps me just to get out of my own head when I'm skiing. I'm not thinking about all the stuff I have to do. I'm not thinking about the laundry. I'm not thinking about the grocery list. I'm not thinking about what I'm making for dinner that night. I'm not thinking about any of that. And there's such beauty in that. So that's another way that I'm gonna try and find my happy place. <laughs> The third thing is gratitude and really thinking and reflecting on what I am grateful for. Some of you do great uh, gratitude journals, which is an awesome idea, maybe writing down three things you're grateful for each morning, even in your notes in your, in your phone, um, or writing them physically down on a piece of paper, or just thinking them in your head, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this. I think just focusing on the positive can help kind of lift you from a funk. It can't come from somebody else, by the way, because if your husband or your partner, your friend's like, oh, but you, you're so wonderful and you have this and you're so lucky. When you're in that state of like overwhelm and sadness, you just want to slap them. So it has to come from you. You have to do it for yourself. The next thing you can do is meditate. There are zillion apps now that help you meditate if you're not familiar with what it is and how to do it. Headspace is one. There's a bunch of others. Do a quick Google search. You'll find a bunch of apps and find one that's right for you. I'm finding that 10 minutes is too much for me with meditation. I really need to do like five minutes. That's about all I have. I'm not gonna put any more pressure on myself. Like five minutes is five minutes and still better than zero minutes. That's part of my action plan as well is to meditate five minutes a day. The next thing for me that's really challenging is to limit the amount of work I'm doing. Most people that I know that I'm that I'm friendly with, they're they're bloggers only. They don't do blog and YouTube. Okay, so from day one, I've been doing full time blogging, three to five blog posts a week, and doing YouTube. YouTube is like a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. And then there's Pinterest, and then there's Instagram, and then there's Facebook, and then there's Twitter, and. It's a, whole, it's a lot, it's like 10 full-time jobs in one. So I really am making a pledge to myself that I am going to work smarter, not harder, and I have set very specific goals of how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna outsource more. I am going to, I join an, an entrepreneur accelerator program that's going to hopefully help me to work smarter, not harder, to grow my business without actually spending more time working. That's the goal. I also want to come up with ways to make revenue for my business that are more passive. So they may not rely so much on an ancillary company, maybe like my my blogging guide that I created. So that's a, a, an example of passive income. I'm thinking about things like that. Hey, if you guys have an idea, <laughs> let me know. I'm always open to ideas, but limiting the amount of time, physical time I'm working, because if I told you guys how much time I work in a week, you, you'd be like, what? It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's more than I should be. And I work really, really hard, and I've been doing that for almost five years. The other part of my action plan is decluttering. And because we rented out our house over the holidays, I was able to declutter quite a bit. I'm working on clothes right now. And you guys, if you haven't already seen my closet editing videos, you need to go back and watch those. It's so helpful to have that roadmap to help you declutter and edit your closet. You know, maybe you're watching that show Tidying Up on Netflix, the Marie Kondo show. She also has a book, The Kondo Method. Basically, it's it's very similar to what I always talk about, but she just uses the word joy instead of cute. I would say, do I feel cute in this? But she says, do you feel, does this bring you joy? And if the answer is no, then you, you thank the garment and then you part with it. I'd never thanked a piece of clothing in my life, but I think it's really cute and sweet that she suggests that. And I used to say this to clients all the time, like don't think of it as losing something. Think of it as someone else gaining that piece and that piece having a new lease on life. Someone else will wear it and be so happy to wear it and wear it all the time. It will really be put to good use. Whereas sitting in your closet collecting dust, it's not doing anything.
The next part of my action plan is to work out. Now, admittedly, the workouts haven't been quite as diligent as I've wanted. Unfortunately, when you're in the state of overwhelm or the state of sadness or on that sort of depression scale, you don't have that like kick in your pants to like get up and work out and you don't have that drive to really you know get her done when you're in the groove man you're just like you're, you're in the groove but when you're in that state of overwhelm it's really hard to get back into the groove and that's kind of where i am and so i'm doing like two or three days a week of working out and that's about it and nothing really that crazy so i started an app called pvolve it's really lovely it feels good to me right now a lot of stretching it feels like self-care and then i do one training session a week i'm not really other than skiing i'm not doing any cardio i hope to add to that but right now i'm just trying to be really patient with myself and trying to grant myself grace and getting back in the saddle The next part of the plan, and this is something I've talked about before, uh, but, but really getting the hormones in check, you know, I am still going through this hormonal roller coaster where I don't have periods for extended periods of time, and then I get one, and then I don't have them again, and then I get one. So I'm not fully through menopause, but I'm almost there. And so my estrogen levels are all over the place. I just know that that's a contributing factor for me. So. If that's something that you think you may be grappling with, whether, you know, maybe you're having hot flashes or maybe you're having trouble sleeping or maybe there's been some weight gain around your tummy area, then it probably is hormone related. I take currently bioidentical progesterone and I also take lyothyronine for my thyroid. I have a mild hypothyroidism, which means slow thyroid. So I also take vitamin D. I also take omega-3. I also take glucosamine for my joints, and that's about it right now. But I am going back in for more blood work to see what's going on. Maybe I need to get on some estrogen. You know, when the period disappears, your estrogen level sort of dips way down. Uh, so I may need to add some estrogen to the mix. But anyway, if you guys want to go back and watch the video I did on menopause, I talk a lot about the follicle stimulating hormone levels, and I talk about hormones and what to do and my experience basically the hormone experience <laughs> so i'm going to go and see a homey i'm going to try a homeopathic hormonal expert that's here locally i'm going to get some new blood work done i'm also getting a really full complete comprehensive physical i think that between those three things I'll get to the bottom of whether there's a deficiency somewhere, a vitamin deficiency or some sort of hormone imbalance and have a much more complete picture of that. And the last thing I want to talk about is therapy. When you are feeling sad, certainly going to see a therapist is, is incredibly helpful. And it's something that I haven't done in a long time. It's something I'm thinking about revisiting, but I tend to like gravitate more to like alternative types of therapy. Like I love hypnotherapy. I love um, acupuncture. I feel like I would rather do that kind of stuff than go and sit and talk to somebody. But I think there's real value in talking through things with an expert and just working through your stuff. I feel like I did that in the late 20s, early 30s, but it may be time to just revisit it a little bit. I'm thinking about it. So that's another part of my action plan that I'm considering, but at the very least, I'm gonna go see a hypnotherapist. I know that sounds weird, but I love hypnosis. I think it's wonderful. So I think that's an important part of the puzzle and it's something to consider. Going to see a therapist, somebody with a real expertise who can help you sort through it, who can help you develop an actionable plan of your very own, who can help you clear out the stuff so that you can focus on the here and now and the future. Those are the things that work well for me that I am now incorporating into my action plan to try and get, pull myself out of this funk, try and climb out of it. And I just thought it would be so great to read some of the comments I got by email from you guys that were really tremendous and, and also just great resources. So I thought I would share it with you guys. Okay, so here's one. It says, I started distance running again and it reminded me of how amazing I feel doing something great for people, for other people, like Meals on Wheels or volunteering. Beth says, I got a puppy and I snuggle all the time with my puppy. <laughs> I love that. 
Bridget says the secret is to take care of yourself. She said, I slowly identified the things that zap my happiness and stopped them or removed myself from them. That is really awesome. Yeah, that's a big one. I feel like I've already done that for the most part. Yeah, identifying people or things in your life that are sucking away your joy and just 86ing those. Ray says, prayer and reading my Bible. Pam says, it's time to take a long break from the computer. <laughs> She's talking to me. She's saying, Aaron, it's time to take a long break from the computer. It's probably right, it's probably so. Thanks, Pam. Adina says, keep the faith, keep pushing forward and doors will open up for you. That's such a beautiful image. Samaz says, praying, reading positive quotes, counting my blessings, and being thankful. Carol wrote to me and said that she's reading and discussing with her friends a book called Happiness by Matthew Kelly. So I'm really eager. I'm gonna see if that's available on Audible because I like to listen to books instead of read them. I'm excited to look that one up. Michelle says, take time off and look after yourself and your family. She said, remember the airplane analogy, and you guys all know this, Put your oxygen mask on first, then help the kids and the people around you. So the idea being you fill up your bucket first and then you can give to everyone around you. And that is so, so true. So if you're feeling depleted, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like, holy crap, how am I gonna do this or keep this up? Or you know, just any number of things that we feel as busy, Women, think about that analogy, fill up the bucket. Think about ways that you can fill up your bucket. I love that, Michelle, thank you. Lisa said, sleep a lot, <laughs> eat well, do what you can when you can. So I have to work on that one, Lisa, but that's a great reminder. Elizabeth said, no one has the answer. It's really about finding the right recipe for you. And that is so true too, because what works for me, I just gave you the laundry list of the things that I'm gonna try, it may not work for you but it's nice to have tools and it's nice to have an action plan. It's nice to know here are some things I can try because when you're feeling that sense of overwhelm and hopelessness or helplessness, you just need like something to pull you up and pull you out and sometimes just having things that you can try can really help to pull you out and up and lift you up and lighten you up and add the joy back. And the last one I wanted to share with you that I just thought was so beautiful was Lisa. First she said, stop watching the news, <laughs> which I personally love because I worked in news as you guys know for a decade and I swear I still have PTSD from TV news. I never watch the news. Even if I hear an anchor voice, like there's a couple anchors who do YouTube videos, I can't listen to those videos because I feel like it triggers, <laughs> it triggers my TV news PTSD. She said, get out into nature, and we talked about that, the importance and, and value in nature. But this is what I just thought was so beautiful. She said, don't do anything other than what speaks to your soul. Ask God, what now, Lord? Quietly, he will answer. That's so beautiful. Whether you're religious or not, like you could substitute the word universe or spirits or angels or uh, what, whatever you want to substitute there, but I just thought that was really special. Don't do anything other than what speaks to your soul. Ask God, the universe, what now? Quietly, he will answer. What now? So good. So, so good. Anyway, thank you, Lisa, for sharing that. Sorry, you guys. This is also a part of what happens when, when you're feeling like this. You can like literally burst into tears at any moment. Again, guys, this is such a hard topic to talk about. It's not a sexy topic. It's not a fun topic. It's not something that's easy because it makes you feel very vulnerable and exposed and it's much easier to just go about life and pretend like everything is okay all the time. But that's not real. We all have these moments in our life where we feel down or we feel overwhelmed or we feel like, you know, we can't keep our heads above the water. We're totally sinking and we're not swimming. You know, I think it's important that as women, we are there for each other. We help lift each other up. We help give each other the tools and the resources that we need to live the best life that we can live each and every day. I really believe that. And so, no, I didn't wanna make this video. Jesus, I didn't wanna make this video. But I feel like I had to, and I feel like maybe it can help somebody else. And so, uh, anyway, that's why I did make the video. <laughs> 
you guys so much for listening to my real talk. I really hope that you all will share in the comments. Let's, let's share more resources. What works? What books are great? What quotes did you read that really spoke to you? What amazing things have you uncovered on your journey that you think can help all of us? Please share them in the comments below. It really is such a valuable resource. And also it's just so great to be able to help each other in that way. So yes, please share. You guys, there are more Real Talk videos. I've done a bunch of them. If you wanna watch more, I'll put the playlist in the description box for you guys to check out. Thank you so much for watching this video. It really means so much to me. I appreciate your time, your attention, and I appreciate all of the notes that you sent me that I wrote down and just saved in a folder in my email inbox. It was really remarkable and special to me, so thank you. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.